Okay, so you might have heard that MPE controllers like Linstrument or Rolly Seaboard don't work with Ableton Live. Uh, this is not entirely true. In fact, you can use these with Live. Um, it's just very cumbersome and painful to do so. So what I want to do is show you quickly how to do it with a workflow that takes as much pain out of the process as possible. So the basic idea is we're going to have several duplicate tracks of our synthesizer, and each one is going to be controlled by a different MIDI channel. So that way Ableton will not strip out all the useful MIDI information before it gets into the synthesizer. So for this, I'm going to be using Serum. That's my favorite soft synth. It doesn't really matter what synth you use. Um, I have to use something. But what you do want to do if you have a modern synthesizer that recognizes MPE signals, you might have something called MPE enabled or MPE mode or something of that sort. Uh, you want to have that turned off counterintuitively because that's the thing that Ableton can't do. It will not be able to send the data in the proper format and it'll cause glitches. So just leave that turned off. Um, you're going to be having one voice per channel. Um, so you want this to be mono or one voice. Some sense will do this differently and you just tell it to use only one voice, but we want this set to mono. Um, I'm actually going to open up a patch that I want to use. Um, that looks good. Um, now you look down at the MIDI for the synthesizer track. Um, for MIDI in, I, from my Linstrument, I use the ultralight MIDI port. And I'm going to set this to channel. I'll use all channels for the moment. Arm the track. Just make sure we're getting some sound. Yep. Okay, and then you want to build your sound here. This is playing in mono, because um, that's how I set the track up. That's how you should do it. Um, and at this point, you want to work on your sound and figure out all your sound design issues. Like say, I want to have a echo on it. Um, and any sound design you're working on, anything you want to do to this patch. Um, basically you want all that work to be done before you start duplicating this to different tracks so that you don't have to copy and paste again and again and again for as many voices as you're using. So let's say I'm satisfied with this sound now. So I'm going to take this track and I'm going to group it. And then any audio effects I have on the track, I'm going to remove and add to the group instead. So that will apply to all of our tracks. Um, if I have a MIDI track, the MIDI needs to go on this channel and before the synthesizer. So if we said I had, uh, I wanted to transpose it or something with some MIDI effect, that goes before the synth, that goes on each individual track and not on the group. Well, the group has the audio effects. Okay, at this point I'm going to set my MIDI channel. Um, I use a instrument. I use it, um, usually in channel per row mode. I have eight rows. That means I'm going to have eight voices and eight tracks here. And for reasons that are complicated and irrelevant, I use channels seven through 14. The channel setup is something you also have to do on the controller. So you would tell it that you want to use seven to 14 or one to eight or whatever you want to use. It doesn't matter. You just need as many tracks as you're going to have voices. So I'm going to have eight of those. So I'm going to duplicate this track 
seven times. Okay. Now I have to set the MIDI channel for each track. This is the boring, painful part. It's going to be channel 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. And then I have to uh, arm all these tracks. And now I can play polyphonically. I should be playing polyphonically. I made a mistake somewhere. Yeah, I missed track 11. So this should be track 11. This is a good time to test it and see that it's working. That's all good. Um, at this point, I don't want to ever have to do all this work that I just did again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename this group and call it um, Demo Patch, Demo MPE Patch. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to here. I'm going to select my user library. And I'm just going to drag demo MPE patch the group into here. And it will remember all that work for me. I never have to do it again. So if I were to delete this whole group, I can drag MIDI patch.als into here. And it will take a moment because it has to load all these instances of Serum. Now, unfortunately, it forgot that these were armed. But it remembers the channels, it remembers the synths. That's all good. So I just turn these back on. And I'm done. Now, at this point, I'll often, because I built the patch, I did all my sound design using a mono version of the sound, there might be some things I didn't like. So I have to go back and tweak. And now I've got these eight instances of it that I have to tweak. And that sucks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this first track and I'm going to change the... Uh, channel 7 to be all channels. Turn off the record on these others. Or I could just switch to that. No, no, that's what I need to do. Now I'm back to a mono voice. Uh, make whatever tweak I need to make. Say the big problem with this track was the release time was not long enough. So I crank up the release time. That's done. Now the fastest way to uh, do this. I'm on the track that I just edited. Select Serum. Copy. Next track. Select Serum. Paste. Next track, select serum, paste. Next track, select serum, paste. That part I haven't figured out how to speed up. But that wasn't that bad. It's all done now. Now I have all these guys here with my, uh, with my change in there. This first one I want to make sure is back on channel 7, and now I have my all-important release time um, on all the tracks. 
Um, now I want to remember that, so I would drag this back into the user library again. Um, press return. Already exists. Yes, I want to overwrite it. And there you have it. So this guy's just sitting there in your library whenever you want to bring him in to any project. And that's about it.